In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use uh, VMD uh, multi-sec alignment to compare uh, monomeric structures. So when I click on this you can see the components of the VMD. We want to go from there, generate the plot that you see on the right, uh, dump it into a, a file that we can open to, into Excel and graph it, uh, and then capture the uh, color screen. You see the untitled multi-sec there. Uh, captured that screen, pasted it here, uh, did a cropping of it. I copied it, pasted it into the graph, which is here. So if I move this now, you see the pasted in here. I just cropped off the rest of that and then aligned the colors from uh, on the x-axis for all the amino acid sequences. Okay. So that might be a bit confusing right now, but it'll make sense as we go along. So I dragged the two that we're going to compare into uh, Autodoc Pymole Viewer. Uh, we're doing a, a wild type human MPC1 and uh, a yeast here. So I brought these in and um, just unclicked this button so we don't see the lines. And we're just seeing the uh, display as a ribbon. And then uh, I set them the color uh, rainbow by chain and then selected secondary structure. And that way the uh, C terminus, excuse me, the N terminus is blue. Uh, you can see that the yeast, it's a little bit farther away. These two just happen to kind of overlap on a key uh, transmembrane helix here, where in the human we know that we have our two cysteines for the transport of the mitochondrial uh, pyruvate. Um, uh, when it's in a heterodimer, but anyway, uh, they just conveniently overlapped at that point. And then the red is the uh, C-terminus. So already you can see there are differences between the yeast, which has this one going off there, and this longer uh, blue chain over here. <laughs> anyway, uh, it be kind of a fun project to compare those two. Uh, but this uh, can be saved as a picture. Just do a save as... Uh, save image as and you can uh, either keep the black background or click here to have a transparent background and then choose where you want to put it. Okay, so we'll dismiss that for now. Uh, what we want to do is get to the uh, let me put this back down to the small here. So this is the VMD. I can make that a little smaller. Uh, it's going to be slow. Anyway, <laughs> um, I want to get into the there. That should show this. Anyway, uh, we won't worry about that right now. What I'm going to do is uh, just exit this. Let's see the graph here. So there's the graph that we want to generate. So I'm just going to uh, create a new session. Get rid of all of this. Get rid of that too. I don't know why that's not. Anyway, let me just do this <laughs> and I'll come back. So when you load VMD, you'll get three windows. Uh, this one is just showing the commands. You don't need to bother with that. Uh, but you get the main and then this one, the display that I just, it'll usually be kind of small in the corner. I just made it a little bit bigger. Left a little spot on the top uh, for when we uh, bring in the multisec. So we'll click File, New Molecule, Browse, and I've got my monomers here. So we're going to do the yeast first, selected it, then you load it, and then you need to go to a new molecule, because if you don't do that, you load the <laughs> what you're bringing in to the same name of what you had just loaded. Anyway, just go to New Molecule, uh, and then... We'll do the wild type human MPC one and load that. Then we can close this. Now we come to extensions, analysis, and multisec. So there's a website uh, 
to follow for this. Uh, I've already tested it. These two, uh, the yeast and the human, are so different that this um, uh, the the first step that they take in here, the stamp structural alignment won't work. So we're just going to bypass that and go to the um, just the alignment, and then we'll come back and we'll do this coloring. Uh, so this is a, a tutorial uh, on uh, doing this, and it's just a little bit easier to follow and gives an explanation for what the colors are. Anyway, so back here, uh, once the multisec uh, loaded, uh, it'll take a while. When you first install it, it's going to have to go and find some uh, uh, other stuff to download and everything. Just be patient and wait. Uh, so here you see the two sequences. Um, I'm going to check both of them. What I've done is I've, to the zoom, I've gone to 75% to see all of it on my screen. That way when I did a screen capture, I got it all. But anyway, um, uh, when you first load it, it's probably going to be at uh, 100% and uh, off to the right will go off the screen. Anyway, I've clicked on the two of them and I'm going to go to Tools. So if I tried this stamp structural alignment, it won't uh, work. So I'm just going to go to the sequence alignment. If they're very similar molecules, as you'll see on that web page, uh, then uh, you can do the stamp, uh, and it does a very interesting thing. But here we're just going to do this one. I leave it by default what it has. Right? Align all the sequences. So now you see that it has kind of separated them to, to match both the same length. Then we go to um, view coloring and I'm doing the distance, the root mean squared uh, distance. Um, and that at that web page it says to use this, but I, I'm using this because I like to think about distances between these differences. So now you see the differences in colors. Uh, this is uh, change these to the new cartoon uh, view. Uh, you can go to File, Render, and just leave it uh, at the snapshot and uh, you know, give your file name, browse to put it someplace, and save it as a bitmap. Uh, that is a 300 DPI that can be used for um, uh, publication. Um, uh, for moving this around, uh, you can come in here to the mouse, select Translate. That lets you move it like this. Select uh, scale that lets you zoom in and out, and then the rotate was where we were. Uh, under display, you can go to axes and turn those off when you're going to save your image so you don't have the axes there. Uh, anyway, just so you can save this to go along with everything else. Now, back to this to get our graph, we go to tools, plot the data all sequences and you see that I've already selected the RMSD comes up by default with this just you know, check that circle and then you get this and then you do a file export ASCII matrix right and uh, here in the monomers you can give it a name but I'm just gonna call this one um, ASCII matrix and then in Microsoft Excel, you will open. It might not let me open it because it's the same name as the one I've got open. So even though it's a DAT extension, uh, you can open it. Uh, it is delimited by space, so check space here, and it automatically separates it into three columns. Next, and then finish, and then here you are. Click on column C, insert line graph there it is um, this one went out to 127 oh I guess it was doing something else with the other one anyway um, we want to come back to uh, VMD here however you want to do it click like that so it's full screen hit the print screen button come back to Excel and do a paste right and we can shrink it down so we can see it all on the screen. Uh, format, crop, 
crop it down to there. Crop it to here. Crop it to here. And crop it up to there. Great. Now what we want to do is move our graph. Uh, align it to our x-axis there. Grab a corner. Make it as big as that. However you want to do it. Right. It should be to the axis out here. Anyway, we can adjust this. And then copy that. Come into your graph. Paste it. And then just drag it down to the x-axis. Align it to the right. And then you can either make this bigger. Right? Well, I guess it's going to go along with it. So here you just got to shrink this. Hey. Somehow we can shrink it. There it is. <laughs> anyway, get that to fit. You can put it on the bottom. I know I'm getting the third one. So in other words, so you want to align the amino acid residues to this. You can have it at the bottom or you can put it at the top. Uh, this just lets you visually see. Uh, move it down here. Get that one out of the way. And you can visually see where you have the, the red is the biggest differences and stuff like that. And these are, you label this, these are in angstroms, the RMSD and angstroms. And these are the residue numbers. Based upon that alignment, um, here it tells you the blue areas in, indicate the molecule are structurally conserved at those points. If there's no corresponding problems, the appear as red. Right? So this uh, helps you to interpret it. And you can compare uh, different uh, monomers of this MPC-1 uh, to see how vastly different things are, or the other monomer, the MPC-2. Uh, if you, hopefully that helps you understand how to use multisec uh, in VMD uh, to uh, align uh, molecules. Since I have just a little bit of time left for... Okay, so uh, what I'm doing now is I'm loading uh, another molecule that's similar to this one. So I've already found it and I load it. Uh, close that, come back to Extensions, Analysis, Multisec, and it appears to have already done everything, right? <laughs> I don't know how I did that, but um, now we can come into the tools and do the stamp because these two are similar. You can see that they're not overlapped at all there. Uh, now it has uh, crunched them together so that they are overlapped, right, in the image here. Um, and uh, we've completed our alignment up here. So we can see it's already colored, right? Maybe not. Let's do view coloring RMSD. There we go. Now we see it. So these were not overlapped, but they're very similar. They were not overlapped, and now they're overlapped, right? So that's what that other function would do. Uh, and again, we can do the RMSD to get the graph and things of like that. So notice the these are very short distances. Our other one had uh, much longer distances, uh, up to 80 or so, right? So a bigger difference, uh, RMSD difference, uh, in comparing the yeast to the wild-type human versus uh, what we just saw for comparing two variants of the human. Uh, no more than 5.5. .5.